Hello, everybody. It's good to be with you. And I'm here with you today with my special friend, Bowden Herrick. He is uh, the newest and um, uh, authorized spiritual teacher of the Living Method of Awakening. Um, he has been a student of mine um, for several years, three years, four years, something. Like three or four years, yeah. Three or four years, yeah. Good long while. And um, showed an interest in teaching fairly early on, and it also showed a talent for it. So <clears throat> that combination worked very well. And um, he ha has worked with me and is continuing to work with me uh, in private session, as well as in the other places that we meet due to the teaching. Um, let me just go ahead and read a little bit about, well, first I can tell you um, without reading about it, that um, Bo has had a very long-term interest in all things spiritual, kind of like me. It just got him early and never let go. And um, I wish it had gotten me a little earlier than it did, but there we go. Um, so he, uh, and he's he's familiar with all the, the, the most of the mystical traditions that we're interested in also, which is at, uh, Advaita, um, uh, Buddhism, um, Zen, and uh, more specifically, and uh, Sufism, and uh, Christian mysticism, and you know others that are that come to uh, similar accords as we do. Um, he's also academically uh, in a, a much better place than just about anybody uh, with us which is that uh, he's, a, he's a certified in a spiritual counselor. He has a BA in psychology and is currently pursuing an MS in pastoral clinical mental health counseling. That's a mouthful. Yes. <laughs> I, I, see this, I, I see now that I left out uh, Sufism, Taoism, maybe Sikhism. So those are other thing, places where he has gone. It's just like me. I mean, just some of everything. And yeah. there's just, there's a lot of helpful stuff out there. There's a lot of junk out there too, but there's a lot of helpful stuff. Um, so Bo, welcome to the family. We're so glad to have you. Thank you. Yeah, and um, tell me what you're gonna be doing uh, uh, pretty soon in, with the, uh, or very soon with the, the Living Method of Awakening. So, um, so we just started the Freedom Beyond Recovery program. Okay. Um, so, you, so you are uh, you're a, a, a sober alcoholic, is that about right? Yes. Like me, I, I, I am. A, I don't know, 23, 24, 25 years. I can't remember, but something like that. Long time. But but which is another way of saying um, I've been sober ever since I woke up this morning. Yeah. Okay. Please go ahead. I didn't mean to interrupt you. No, you're fine. Um, yeah, so I've, I'm in recovery. I've been um, sober for about five and a half years and been, you know, in, in the recovery setting longer than then. But yeah, yeah. this time around, it's been about that long. And um, yeah, so my... I guess initial shoe in into um, teaching in the living method is the intersection between recovery and non-duality because there's a lot of a lot of similarities to both the recovery process and clearing. Uh, yeah, I agree. Um, and I would also say the they share the same root, mm -hmm. um, but addiction stems from the same place as it's, suffering addiction is seeking yeah still trying to fill up that god-sized hole mm -hmm. exactly the, the, looking for the part of me that will make me okay mm -hmm. make me enough make me okay make me happy make me accepted oh, this make me good enough yeah and uh hopefully not too good, which is what we tend to swing between, you know, uh, yeah. I've always swung be between impotence and arrogance, you know, just yeah. 
that I'm not, I'm not very good at that in between stage, which is normal. Yeah. <laughs> I would also, um, I suspect that even normal people struggle with that too. They just don't talk about it as much or it's not as evident. But yeah, it's it's the same. So through um through just life going as it does, um suffering brought me to recovery and recovery brought me to non duality. Yeah. And this teaching. So um yeah, so within Awakening Clarity now, I'm um doing clearing and awakening sessions, but mm -hmm. also the Freedom Beyond Recovery program um, and working on a book in the summer. There's a lot of exciting stuff happening. Yeah, yeah, it's a big, it's a big time. And so the, one of the ways that we came to be as close as we are is that you developed an interest in my book beyond recovery non-duality and the two and the 12 steps is that correct mm -hmm. yeah so tell me about that and tell me about what your your uh your beyond recovery meetings that you'll be starting to have or freedom beyond recovery meetings that you'll be having so yeah freedom um beyond recovery was the first book of yours that i that i read um, and then very quickly, all the rest. But that was my my introduction to your teaching. Um, and it it was just something that I could really relate to because not only was it addressing um, my experience in recovery with dealing with addiction, um, I'm I've dealt with alcoholism, drug addiction, you know, codependency, eating disorder, the whole, you know, I've tried every way to uh, get out of self, but always as self. And that's, that was the issue. Yeah. 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 <laughs> I get it. It's a, yeah. that's a tough scramble to get out of. Mm -hmm. And seem to be for sure. Yeah. I'm trying to fix the problem with the problem. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but it's a different thing when you're looking from the solution. Yes, it is. And thank, thank God we have both been, you know, we, we both, I just consider it lucky that we're here, yeah. right? Just, uh, you can call it grace if that suits you, but I just call it lucky. Yeah, exactly. I, to, left to my own devices, so to speak, I'd be dead. Well, me too. Me too. Long ago, I would have, I would have never been alive long enough to meet the best part of my life. Betsy Hackett Davis, and uh, and spend the best years of my life, which have been uh, number one since sobriety, but particularly since uh, uh, since uh, uh, since two thousand six, when uh, uh, it certainly isn't the final awakening, but it was the the it was the last big earth shaking kind of thing, mm. if you will. I mean, it doesn't, have, which is a bad way to describe it because. Um, uh, awakenings don't need to be big and uh, and um, earth shaking, and I really don't recommend them. Not that you have any choice over what kind of awakening you have, but I don't. Uh, but I certainly don't encourage anybody down the have a big awakening time because what happens is that experience, as you know, I'm just preaching to the choir, but we're talking to other people at the same time. Mm -hmm. So that experience. That, that that is the the first breakthrough awakening or the first large breakthrough awakening one that has some duration um it can also just be a quick glimpse glimpse but that can be misconstrued as that because that was pretty delightful by and large and um those can be misconstrued as that's enlightenment as i should feel like that Whoa, all the time and you know you couldn't get anything done if you were just sitting around in an or orgasmic state all day um so 
that the experience passes. And when experience passes, people say, oh, I lost my awakening. But the one that says I lost my awakening never had an awakening. Mm -hmm. yeah, because the only thing that ever wakes up, as you well know, is the awakeness itself. Wakes up, our big joke is that Fred Davis desperately wanted to wake up to the truth of the, of the universe or the truth of God. And the truth of God woke up to the fiction of Fred Davis instead. That's, that is awakening, is coming to recognize, oh, there's no Fred, oh my God. So, and, and, and what you can't see until it happens is the ramifications of that run through everything, you know, like, yeah. like roots behind a, you know, underneath a busy, busy plant. And, um, the, what happens after that, which is what you and I are most concerned with right now. I mean, we, I still do awakening sessions and I still do, and you do too. And, and, and I do, um, skillful means and stuff, and stuff like that. But about 80% of my time is probably spent on helping people clear. And that clearing is the process after awakening. And that's, I'll go into it in another video soon. But that, um, but that clearing process, that's what almost nobody experiences. And for, for if not, if so, then not for very long. Because the feeling after awakening, we've all been seekers for so long, and finally we saw it. Oh my God, it's real. I, I, I see it and I've got it. Finally, I've got it. I, that's exactly what I said in 1992. I've got it. And what and what that is, actually, it's an announcement that I don't got it. <laughs> if I ever had it, I don't have it anymore. Um, if, so we misinterpret the awakening event. And then we, pro, then we start making all kinds of projections from there. And none of them are accurate. So our idea is to guide people. Uh, who are in the process of recovering from being a human being and just a human being. There's a human being here now, too, for sure. Yeah. At least within the relativity as we know it. But um, it's not, I can't say that, I, I can't say that this human being is not me because I'm all there is. Right, they're just oneness, which means that this has to be, and I know that that is. So this is oneness talking to oneness, and we can look and see that. Well, hell, what are we? What's oneness talking about? Well, it's talking about oneness because it, there's no other topic. There's no one else to talk, and there's no other topic. There's just always it's oneness. If you and I were talking about football, it would still be oneness talking to oneness about oneness. Mm -hmm. So it's this the the awakening is like a gift. Even if you work for it real hard and all that, still when it happens, it's a gift. And what we're talking about is unwrapping the gift. Because what we tend to do is we say, yeah. thank you so much, and then pull it to our chest, right? And yeah. Never unwrap it. Never see what's really there. That's a great way of putting it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So clearing is all about unwrapping the gift but there's also we've been conditioned to not open anything i guess to extend the the analogy we've been conditioned to not open the gift or look closer at, at what's here mm -hmm. and so a lot of clearing involves opening the gift and um kind of untangling the tendencies to towards misidentification so um yeah that's that's the bulk of the work but well, a lot of saying, awakening is really it's it's this this maybe maybe you have of some sort of event if you mm -hmm. will oh wow or maybe you don't maybe i've had people just oh you know that's it and mm -hmm. um <laughs> but one way or the other it's sort of we could say it's it's a misnomer, but we'll call it an event, and then we'll talk about 
uh, clearing as the process behind the event. And um, addiction is, um, and that's all up this, that, that's right up the seeker's um, lane because I'm reaching for something else to fix me. I'm reaching for something out here to fix me. And it might be booze or drugs or girls or, 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 or men, whatever it is. It's just, it doesn't make any different gambling. It's, the list is as long as there is far, the list is only as long uh, as there are pleasures. So um, we're constantly trying to get that. And the thing is, is that I have worked with people uh, who were, I worked with alcoholics who were not sober. I, I, I typically don't do that now. I'm not saying I wouldn't, but I'm just saying uh, that it would be, it would be not be the norm if I were to do so. Because generally speaking, and if you're an alcoholic in your cups or a drug addict in your drugs, then um, you, this is the wrong way to put it, but I'm just going to say it because everybody will understand sort of what we're talking about, is that it cannot be sustained because the mind is, because what happens with awakening is that the mind gets very clear. And then every time I take a drink, it gets a little stupider. It does that whether I'm awake or not. Yeah, whether I'm awake, alert awakeness itself or not, whether I think I'm Fred or whether I recognize that I'm consciousness, it's uh, the unit just gets a little stupider every time you were drunk or drink into it. And you can't sort it, you can't sort it out because this is so profound but at the same time, it's just so incredibly subtle, is it not? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's it's very simple and indescribable, and yet the most obvious thing yeah. there is. Yeah, it's and it's 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 really simple once it is. Yeah, but yeah. it's it's a bitch until then, because I know because I was yeah. a, for twenty four years I was an alcoholic for um 30 and um i guess i'm just yeah right about 30 and um certainly 25 and uh that was a haunting and then somewhere in there i caught the seekers uh the seekers flu if you will and i think it was because i felt like if i woke up i wouldn't have to quit drinking <laughs> Mm -hmm. so i would get to be uh in, in enlightened uh enlightened and in my cups fred right because uh, that's what we all think is that awakening is going to be something for the character for fred or for what we call Bo or whatever which sadly is Sadly for the unit is not the case. Yeah. 